City of God is a 2002 Brazilian crime feature film adapted from a novel of the same name. With a highly religious sounding title, viewers at first glance will think that the movie revolves around God, but in reality, the, the title of the film itself actually came from an actual city in Brazil called Cidade de Deus, which is a Portuguese translation of City of God, thus becoming the name of the movie. This film is loosely based on true events, about the lives of people in a sadistic neighborhood or favela during the 60s until the 80s. The director, Fernando Meireles, said that with this film, he wanted to put the audience in a favela in terms of the atmosphere, condition, and the whole situation, giving a glimpse of the outside world to a favela in action. Interestingly, the story does not depict the favela as a foreign situation to which the audience can hardly relate. Rather, it felt real. The authenticity of the film's concept is well captured with the interactions of the characters. This movie has many interesting characters that affect one another with their decisions and actions, just like in the real life. The movie was able to capture the relationships between cause and effects of the characters' actions and what happened to the other characters and ultimately to the plotline. This movie has a lot of well-written characters, but we are going to be focusing on four main characters, which are Rocket, the true protagonist of the movie, Benny, who's in the middle, a friendly gangster who is known to be the coolest guy in the favela, Lil Z, a true villain for the whole movie, and Knockout Ned, who is a civilian turned gang member. This analysis will be focusing on their morale, the relationship with others, and how that affects and interconnects with their actions. City of God portrays the sequence of events from Rocket's point of view. He narrates the movie as the true protagonist of the movie, hence he is the moral anchor for the audience to strongly relate to, resulting in them immersing themselves more into the movie. The way he navigates his life has a pattern that has always revolved around basic morality. He will rather live an honest life alongside the hardships that may get in his way and live it with face value rather than resorting to a criminal lifestyle, which is the main theme of the movie itself. It is refreshing to see a character that shines as a contrast towards the main recurring theme of the film. Moreover, we as the viewers also experience the satisfaction felt by Rocket when the effort of surviving with this kind of morale paid off at the end by getting a job as a photographer, which was his lifelong dream. And also, our connection with Rocket himself is shown with the uneasiness that we felt when Rocket was tempted in a life of crime. The way Rocket was able to stand on his moral compass can be seen by how he backed down many times from robbing anyone and also from a life of crime, trying to work honestly by helping his dad sell fish in the first act of the film, and later becoming a convenience store employee, while others his age is involved in a life of crime. Honest money was not only what was on his basic morale though, he was also showcasing this ability to dismiss his vengeance and needs and just live life when Benny eventually stole Angelica from him but still nurtured a good relationship with Benny. Another case of this behavior of Rocket can be seen when he repressed his will to kill Lil Z when Blackie's turf was taken over by him, because as we all know, Lil Z killed his brother Goose. And this was an opportunity with a gun near him, but he chose not to. Rocket's action might seem normal for us, but in an environment and with the situation of the favela, this was incredibly rare. Proven on the other side of the spectrum by Lil Z, who initially goes by Lil Dice, who has never hesitated in his life, even from a young age, to resort to violence. He then picked up the spirit of living a gang life after seeing what the Tender Trio did way back when they dominate the favela. The Tender Trio consists of Goose, Rocket's brother, Shaggy, Benny's brother, and Clipper. Lil Dice, or Z, will later on go on a heist with the trio and then ally with his childhood friend, Benny. And the most interesting aspect of the complex relationship between Lil Z and Benny is how Lil Z still retain affection for him, who is almost like a dear brother to Lil Z himself. The movie showed this with subtle gestures. For example, hinting that Lil Z has always been with Benny since childhood until they both grew up, and the both of them then slowly climbed the domination ladder and became the head of the gang of the largest criminal group in the favela. Lil Z, in his nature, was hungry for power, 
and obviously his hunger must be satiated. He then proceeds to see drug dealing as a powerful profession with connection and money. Thus, for becoming a successful drug dealer and eliminating his former competitor, he can receive and he did receive the most powerful and fearful title as an indiv individual by the favela, ruling with fear as his greatest strength. He was truly the worst by not showing any signs of humanity in him, doing whatever he wants just because he can. He often abused other people for his entertainment, like how he raped Mane Galia, who was a romantic interest for Knockout Ned, in front of Ned himself. Not done inflicting nightmares, to destroy any doubt and to keep his image in front of his men, he regretted his decision of sparing Ned, then proceeded to hunt down Ned and killed Ned's younger brother and uncle in Ned's house. In the later act of the movie, when the war tension is building up, he also managed to make one of his still kid underlings to kill another kid from the runs due to the ruckus that the runs had been doing in the past weeks. The people that he had done unspeakable things to hold an unspeakable amount of grudge and revenge as well towards Lil Si. And that was no different from Knockout Ned, who ended up fighting and leading a war against Lil Si. And it ultimately leads to the effects of his action. When the runs eventually killing Lil Si on the spot after the war, Ended. Alongside Lil Z, there was also Benny who became the most influential person. Being the younger brother of one of the tender trio members, it was not surprising to see how he ended up on the bad side of Favela. However, a life full of only violence and fights did not sit right for him in the long term. Around the 1970s, he stumbled upon Rocket's friend group, which happened to attract Benny's attention. The lifestyle of the group of youngsters there seems to be more suitable for Benny's true personality. After realizing that new farm comfort, Benny then proceeds to hang out more with the group, befriending everyone in the process. This starts with him asking Tiago to buy him fancy clothes and wear his hip clothes from Tiago's recommendation and end up being an intimate friend of course of the young boy and also Rocket. Benny also was a close friend to Rocket even when Benny managed to snatch Angelica away from Rocket, who initially was already pursuing Angelica but held no grudge. Time flew by and Benny became sick of the gang's lifestyle that he had been living up until that point. The parallels between him and his brother was uncanny. Both of them decided to pursue a new start in their lives along with their newfound girlfriends. As for Benny, a farewell party was thrown and Benny successfully gathered every group of people together to celebrate his new path in life and to say their goodbyes. But unfortunately, Everything went downhill very fast because he got into a fight with his childhood friend, Lil Z, who was pissed at that time due to his early encounter with Knockout Ned's girlfriend and himself. Not only that, but fate also caught up with Benny when he got shot right after that kerfuffle with Lil Z. During the party night by Blackie, who had also been wronged by Lil Z and decided to target Lil Z, but missed the shot, causing Benny to end his life without being able to start anew. Like the previously mentioned parallels between him and Shaggy, they both developed a big change of thought and dreams caused by the relationship with their girlfriends who promised them a better and peaceful life together. In the moment, the death of Benny was a trigger for Lil Z's character development as he showed an unbearable amount of grief for the loss of his best friend. As seen in how the film handles Lil Z, after Benny's passing, Benny was in a way Lil Z's last piece of humanity. This was also shown in the visual language the film has. The film showed that Lil Z and Benny was almost always shown together in the frames early on in the film. But the more the movie progresses, when Benny starts to hang out more with Rockets and Tiago's friend group, Lil Z became more and more violent and distant until finally it snaps when Benny dies. He was the only person holding him from even becoming worse than he already is. However, despite his easygoing and pacifist nature, Benny's fate in the ironically God-forsaken city, the city of God, ended tragically. Last but not least is Knockout Ned. Everything was smooth sailing for Ned because he was initially an upstanding citizen of the city of God. He had a harmonious family who supported one another. He also had a romantic interest with Mane Galia 
only to lose both his family members and his admired women to the filthy hands of Lil Z. He then spiraled down in his revenge and decided to team up with Karen, an opposing gang team of Lil Z. Ned then became a gang member, complete with his participation in raids and heists. Originally, he refused to hurt any innocent party during the raids until some condition required him to go against that commitment. That promise soon was broken multiple times in raids when there was a life threatening risk coming from innocent people, making Knockout Ned a vigilante turned criminal. This can be seen at the beginning of Knockout Ned's shift in morality when he shot a security guard in a bank in front of the guard's son, an act of self defense. Ned's most valuable item in his life before everything went downhill was his relationships. When those bridges of relationships collapsed because of Lil Z, his mind jumped straight to revenge. Knockout Ned was blinded by his revenge, thinking his vengeance would solve everything. But in the middle of the all ongoing chaos, he still reflected on his own actions every now and then, questioning his reality and humanity. These can be seen in his interview with the reporter, where he stated that how he was still worried for the people that had a relationship with him and that those relationships are now a fear of him. That scene still managed to accept empathy from the audience. His true personality was shown with the concern for the heavily wounded, for example the boy, from Kerr's turf during the final war. Little did he know, that kid was named Otto, and he was the son of the father, a security guard, who had been murdered, shot point blank by Ned, doing the bank robbery. When Knockout Ned set out to look for possible help to support the boy, Otto shot Ned, ending both of their lives on the spot. But of course, before Ned dying, he showed his empathy, listening to his true nature before him passing away eventually. The chronological tragedy that was depicted in the movie was indeed a masterpiece of interlinked series of events that has the heavy implications of the cause and effect of their actions and relationship on the overall plotline. The way time and space are used to tell a story of the series of characters is very impactful to the character's development and the progression of the plot. The movie City of God is arguably one of the best movies that were able to master the art of storytelling through interconnecting events and relationships and remain a legendary masterpiece and art piece.